we're excited to talk about Social Impact Lab, but before we do that, I would like to acknowledge that uh, I live and work in the ancestral, unceded, and traditional land of Muslim people. Um, as settlers, we express our gratitude and respect for the Muslim people in recognition of their presence, both in the past and in the present, and their contribution to UBC as a learning institution. As we talk about social impact today, I invite you to deliberate on history of colonization and reflect on the ways in which UBC can advance decolonization. With that introduction, I would like to pass uh, the conversation to Susan Brosnan, the director at the Center for Community Engaged Learning. Thanks, Bruce. Um, yes, hello and welcome. I, I am Susan Grossman, the director at the Center for Community Engaged Learning here at UBC, and my colleague Bruce uh, and I work together quite closely and we'll be presenting today. Um, for those that don't know, the center supports um, the engagement with community organizations and faculty and students. So we support faculty to integrate community engaged uh, challenges, questions, concerns, um, projects into courses and help um, faculty know how to help their support their students to actually apply their disciplinary learning to those challenges. So in any given year, there's probably about five to 6,000 students who are engaged in some form of community engaged learning. Not all of that through our office. Some of that happens outside of us, but that's just we're, we're tracking it for the entire institution. And so uh, the university as a whole likely works with four to 500 partners a year on community engaged projects. So that gives you a sense of scale. Bruce, next slide. So uh, we're here to talk about the Social Impact Lab uh, curriculum. Um, so at the end of today, you'll have a better sense of what that is, um, how you might utilize it in, in a course or a context that you have as an educator. We will share with you some information about some pilot courses we ran last year to start to build the curriculum and test its efficacy. And we'll offer you the opportunity to explore the curriculum yourself to see kind of what resonates for you and, and if this is something that you might want to actually apply in a, in a course-based or project-based context. Uh, so what is a social impact lab? So I was playing my own slide. Um, a social impact lab is a, <clears throat> pardon me, it's a suite of multi-format curricular materials designed to integrate content about social issues and systemic change into courses. Um, these curricular materials allow faculty, students, staff, any educator to design and participate in collective impact projects. Um, we have collected pre and post surveys from students involved in the pilots in last year's pilots. And while we're sharing preliminary results in this workshop, we're also planning to recruit new faculty members uh, to expand our pilot. So part of this is to share the curriculum, but also entice those of you here to think about, is this something you wanna try out and partner with us? And then um, a social impact lab is, um, <clears throat> it prioritizes innovation and experimentation to find solutions. So we uh, use social impact labs to help students think systemically from kind of understanding the issue to the whole project co-creation. And social labs exist in the world, so we didn't create that concept, uh, but ours are different in that we embed pedagogy and values that are related to community engaged learning around reciprocity, ethical engagement, um, those kind of things. Our labs are also uh, encouraging students to <clears throat> think about, um, social problems and identifying kind of inequities inequities exist, root causes and pathways for action to challenge pre-existing solutions, pre-existing systems with community-led solutions. So ours are slightly different. So we took the concept of social lab and we added a spin to it that integrates community engaged learning. And so here's what we talk about kind of how it differs. So those of you who know what community engaged learning is, you understand that it's um, often starts from a fully formed project where a partner has said, this is what I want students to do. And then it's integrated into the class and students work on predetermined goals. Whereas in our social impact lab and community engaged learning process, we are keeping it more open-ended. Community partners bring a challenge forward. There's not an idea of how it should be tackled. Rather, the purpose of it is for students and faculty to analyze and contextualize and understand the challenge and identify an actual actionable path forward to tackle the problem. Um, through this work, we expect um, students to have an increased awareness of their own positionality and collective responsibility. Um, we encourage the understanding of root causes of critical issues. We support issue analysis and intra intrapersonal reflection. Um, and as I said before, we enable collective impact projects for action on social and environmental issues. And we develop resources and skills uh, within students 
so they can tackle these issues. So that's sort of how we kind of think of it as a social impact lab plus community engaged learning. So it kind of builds on a, a pedagogy that we currently um, support. And so as I referenced, um, in an effort to sort of build um, the curriculum and develop the model, we actually um, enlisted four faculty members the, this past year uh, to work with us on, uh, on this project. Uh, each was given uh, some financial resources uh, to help run the course so that if that meant a student researcher or a TA, they could use the money toward that. They were also given access to our staff um, in a very collaborative way. So normally we, when we work with faculty, we support them to integrate projects into courses. They run the course, we come back at the end to help see how evaluate it, how did it go? We're, we're kind of there in the middle, you know, as problems arise. But in this case, we were actually there throughout the whole process. So we weren't co-teaching, but we were collaborating. We we're helping build in real time the mechanisms to integrate and test um, the curriculum. And so this is what our pilot was trying to achieve. It's identifying the supports required, clarifying resources for scale, testing the efficacy, um, and the mechanisms we needed to support the program. So that's sort of a bit about the pilot, which Bruce will talk about a bit more next. Thank you, Susan. Um... So that's the framework of the lab, and I just want to take a minute to see if there's any questions about the theoretical background about social impact lab that we could address before we jump into the example. So feel free if you have any questions about uh, the conceptual framework uh, to unmute, uh, and I'll give you about 30 seconds for that. If not, I'll jump into that uh, to the examples that we have from the pilot project. Okay, so maybe 30 seconds is too long. Uh, but feel free to interrupt at any time as we talk. Uh, it's a small group of us, so this is supposed to be a conversation. We'll be happy to answer any questions. So one of the that we have from that pilot project is a course on evaluation in a graduate study studies. Um, and so we had 16 students uh, registered for that course, working uh, independently at home in an in asynchronous uh setting uh so the challenge about this course was they were not actually in the classroom so uh we had to figure out the way to integrate the social impact lab curriculum into that course and one of the solution was to to adopt and adapt that curriculum into workbooks so we worked with the faculty member to embed those learning objectives that you see around understanding evaluation pro, uh, priorities, develop evaluation plan, apply evaluation theory to practice and understand organizational context. And also give the students uh, the skills about pro providing uh, in a real context rather than a theoretical context. So they get that hands-on experience with that, uh, with social impact. And so the, the contribution of the SIL curricular integration in that was value exploration and collective impact working across differences, system thinking, and identifying a vision, and collaborating actively with the community partners. So we had two community partners for this course, and the students were grouped in group of four, uh, collaborating. Each, each partner uh, worked with eight students in total. Um, the other course was an undergraduate uh, course on climate action lab. These are one credit courses. Uh, so the students are grouped together, uh, as part of uh, their laboratory learning on climate action. Um, there was approximately about 50 students in that class and the learning outcome concerned applying climate literacy, critically assessing climate strategies, developing practical insight and contributing to climate action. Um, the partner for that uh, was uh, the city of Vancouver uh, where the, the, the interest was to to develop material that increases literacy of the citizen on climate action. Um, some of the works that we adopted from SIL curriculum included value alignment, system thinking, and visioning social action. We we're also, during the pilot project, uh, we started to evaluate how uh, our work is impacting uh, faculty and students. So we designed a pre and post survey with the students in four courses, um, and that they were distributed through the faculty members. We also conducted semi-structured interviews with the four instructors that were collaborating with us. And uh, we asked them to gain direct and indirect feedback from the community organizations. So there was, through those interviews with faculty, we also asked them about what was the experience of the, of the community partners 
and whether or not we should uh, we should stay in touch with them for future work. Uh, in relation to our surveys, we we haven't got all the post surveys right now, but I could show you um, a great example of attitude questions that we had for our students around the work that might contribute to their learning. So um, we wanted to know actually they're interested in some of the core values of community engaged learning by asking them about applying academic knowledge to social issues. Um, but there were also competency issues that we hope that they get around what community engaged learning will provide the students such as communication, teamwork, leadership. So um, as you see in this, students at UBC seem to, they seem to be very keen on, on applying learning into a specific context and they actually care about issues around social justice. So uh, this was telling before students go in, there's actually interest that students want to do this kind of work and adopt it. Uh, we'll see in the post surveys how actually that might change uh, given that they go through this process. And then we have also qualitative questions from, from students and about their experience. So they could tell us if something went wrong or not, how was that experience generally and how uh, the structures could uh, improve the future delivery of that course. Um, I will be happy to talk more about our evaluation at, at the end as well. Um, but I think it would be important for us to show what social impact lab, um, the social impact lab toolkit that was generated uh, during 2022 as we worked in, in collaboration with four faculty members. So um, in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna share the website with you. This is just the introduction of how the website was designed. So social impact lab toolkit is designed based on certain learning outcomes, lessons, and central themes that will help instructors and students to embed the pedagogy of social impact into their classrooms. So the organization of the website was, was developed gradually through conversation with uh, our expert at Center for Teaching and Learning Technology, as well as uh, faculty members and students as we were designing this. So uh, the first reiteration of the design um, prioritize the teams and from those teams develop this lessons. Um, so it would be it would be easier for you and I will uh, quickly share that with you. But just before I go in there, it's not just like that the that the cell curriculum could be adopted either through a workbook or um, through workshops. It, we're open to suggestion about how faculty might adopt the cell curriculum. So one example is uh, community driven priorities is seems key to prepare students for community engaged learning to make sure those learning uh, experiences are meaningful. So one of the workshops, uh, one of the lesson plans is around value exploration, which provides uh, students with deep reflection on root values on systematic issues such as climate emergency or uh, decolonization, certain topics that are important to a specific course. Um, and then it walks them through uh, considering place and history information of those values. And also uh, giving the students to adopt a strand with the community. So uh, instead of traditional service learning, we're really collaborating with community organizations to address certain social uh, issues. I don't want to call them problems necessarily, but they are pressing uh, needs that the community and its uh, its people are experiencing. So it, it, it helps the students to attend to that. And then critical reflection is a key component of that pedagogy of community engaged learning that will come. So we'll, I'll share uh, the self toolkit with you right now in the chat box. Um, and we would like to give you about seven minutes to explore uh, the toolkit. And then we'll come back uh, and ask you about how was your experience. And I'll, I'll add to Bruce's comment. As you look at the toolkit, think about how you might utilize it. If, if you might utilize it, the questions that come up, it is being, um, the website is being um, user tested with four, no, three uh, library science graduate students right now. So we know we'll make some changes to it after they give us feedback on the user experience. But you're seeing a very, um, the beta version. This is our first go at creating it. So. And as you're exploring it, let us know if you have any questions in the, either in the chat or by just um, turning on your mic. So 
So I think we could slowly start, if that's okay with you, Susan, to talk about a little bit more about the website. Yes, that's great. Um, and thank you. Uh, so the um, the toolkit that you're looking at was, um, we should say, started as an idea around um, actually a, uh, a series of um, standalone workshops. This is initially how we um, conceived of the idea of how to prepare students for social impact. So we applied for a uh, grant to the Ministry of Advanced Ed to build out these workshops. But as we we're working on the curriculum in real time with the faculty partners, we learned that each had a need for something slightly different, that standalone workshops were not actually that uh, easily integrated into the classes, that they actually were looking for more um, uh, modular type lessons. And so what you've seen on the toolkit is those modular lessons where you can search for a learning outcome or a theme or an idea and start to build out your own, you might call them workshops or lesson plans. You can take all of it. You can take one lesson. So the idea is that it can be used by any um, anyone in any discipline to advance the goals they have for their course without being so structured, um, but allowing more structure. That being said, now that you've looked at it, I want, we wondered what reflections or thoughts or questions or comments or anything that you had that we can start to have a conversation about. So I'll leave it general for now. And if no one has a comment, I might get more specific on my questions. <laughs> Giving it a couple more seconds. <laughs> Oh, great. Thanks, Julia. I already found some lessons you can lose, use in your course. Um, would you I mind sharing some of that <laughs> with a group? Yeah, I started down um, at the basic stuff, and there's um, I'm looking through the stuff on systems thinking now, but the things about uh, getting students to articulate their values, um, I think would be really good at the, the outset um, of a course that's about um, like uh, social justice and um, community projects. That's great. Have others found anything that they're like, oh, this is interesting, or I could imagine utilizing this in some way? Any critiques? Yes, we like critiques. We know it's it's a first <laughs> draft. We know it's got to have some, some critiques. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, the, the, um, the way that you've uh, organize the learning outcomes into different levels uh, must be helpful for instructors so that they can know how the entry point and then how to escalate the learning from there. Yeah, thanks, Ainsley. That was uh, that was very intentional, recognizing that some instructors or some students may already have a certain baseline knowledge. So you don't have to start at the very bottom, but if you did need to start there, you could. So it gives you that modular uh, ability to kind of pick and choose. Um, one thing we're discovering is that, like you know, in our in our idealized view, all faculty would be, end up working with a community organization. But we also recognize these tools, in some ways, can just be used absent that. They can just be used as lessons within a course um, that might have nothing to do with community engaged learning. So for our needs, we're still supporting the community engaged learning part, but we're also recognizing this can take a life of its own, and we're not sort of dictating how it has to be used but recognize it can, we're going to find that it's used in many different ways. Yeah, I always think of community engaged learning and organizing that in a course is, is you know, not something that um, a faculty member that's just beginning to teach might want to do, that it's a more advanced skill. But, but I agree with you, like, um, we, we're all trying to prepare students to go out into the world and do these practical things. So this, 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 website is so useful in that way that I can I can use it in my own work as well with my own team if if I choose to. That's great. That's good to hear. Yeah, and if I may add, because uh, it, it might at the first look, it might look very simple, but it actually adds uh, this opportunity for faculty. So if they're teaching higher level courses where some of this uh, topics and themes are sort of simplified in lessons planning, it provides an instructor with that opportunity to integrate their own disciplinary outlook into it or challenge that disciplinary outlook and be more critical of it. So a simplified version of a lesson to our eyes was it's quick enough to get people thinking about something and depth will follow given what level students are engaging with this topics and what, what projects they're adopting in their work with the community. So 
in that sense, it might, in the first look, it might be okay. This is, this is very short and concise. But at the same time, that means it just, there's room for developing it and extending it. Bruce, maybe we can tell, oh, Stephanie, sorry, go for it. Hi, good morning. Um, thank you so much for sharing this website. There's lots of really super useful stuff in here. Um, I'm looking at the pieces on communication planning and communication empathy. Um, and I guess my question is partly to do with this and then partly a more general question um, about the toolkit. Um, are there any guidelines on the length of the course that, that people would be looking at? Because I'm just thinking about, um, you know, some of the courses that I support, which are three credit courses, they're one term long. Um, and I'm thinking about the process that it would take for students to sit with a community partner and to um, hear not only what the challenges are, but to think through the solutions and to come up with like, you know, to do this kind of um, planning in a really, um, in a really good deep and meaningful way. Um, and I think to do that would take a lot of time. So I guess I'm curious about your recommendations around time frame of courses. Um, if you would have recommendations for instructors who are looking at, you know, like one term or two term courses and, and different pieces like that around um, sort of setting realistic expectations for, um, for people around how much time it takes to do processes like this really well. Bruce, do you want to take that one? That's a great question, Stephanie. Well, uh, it it's very flexible it, 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 and it's very collaborative in that sense. So some of this, uh, it might take longer if you want to delve in deep into things. So we're really open to conversations and encourage instructor agency around um, the integration of the curriculum within their courses that they suit their students because we know instructors know their students better than we do. Uh, and and we're also getting feedback from them in, in ways that we could improve the uh, the curriculum that is uh, that is posted right now as it exists. Um, and I don't know whether that directly speaks to that question, but it's you know it's an open book in a sense that is not a text that is written to a stay as as text. It is it's meant to be enacted in many ways that it suits the curriculum and as it suits the faculty comfort level with some of this topic as well because not everything has to go into one course or not so it has to be very selective and and they could kind of integrate it as it suits their needs but also we we noticed that second year students have different capacities than graduate students and to what extent this could be a starting point for other activities that might follow in a course yeah if i can also tackle that and that is really a great question and one that we're actually also deeply considering, Stephanie, like how do you, because the, the, the goal in a kind of a, an ideal world is move toward collective impact projects. But in reality, uh, depending on the year level of the students, the length of the course, it could really vary. And so in some cases, if it's a first year course, it may just be introduction to the ideas and the introduction to the idea of collective impact versus actually moving all the way to a project. Um, whereas a graduate course or a capstone course that where students have the, the skills and abilities already, uh, in some cases, it could actually be a really fast pivot to that collective impact stage. So to Bruce's point, we're trying to keep it quite open for faculty to determine what makes sense in their context. But it is one of those things that we're not always going to achieve the um, the end that we have in mind, the, the idealized end. So if that's a helpful comment. Um, sorry, there are two Stephanie's in the room. So I uh, just to respond, uh, to your question, Stephanie Hendricks, I, I we would love to hear more about your plan and, and how this cell could be integrated if you want to unmute and kind of share that with us. Uh, sure, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> well, first of all, apologies to everyone for being late. Um, uh, and so I, I apologize if I've missed things and I'm asking about things you've already spoken about. But um, so I'm a, a interdisciplinary graduate studies doctoral student at UBC Okanagan, and I'm doing a post-secondary curriculum on environmental health and environmental justice that's uh, meant for broadly for uh, actually community colleges are my, are my target um, group of young adults. And I have uh, eight modules with a podcast in each module. And it's a scholarly personal narrative format. So it's storytelling rather than linear information. But having worked in environmental health and environmental justice collaboratives for many years, um, 
I find this toolkit to be really wonderful because the issue of working out conflict and working collaboratively and um, and and especially with uh, different stakeholders. So you on different issues, so environmental health, for example, on a pesticide issue, you might have farm workers, but you also might have wealthy suburban moms who don't want the pesticides coming <laughs> into their homes and stuff. So, so this, as for instructors, I think this would be a great toolkit to um, use to help however way they take my open education resource curriculum and use it if that makes sense it's a, that's a lot of information in a short period of time but but this is exactly something I mean there are some things like this out there but this is with the lesson plans and you've so thoughtfully logically laid out these various elements and their relationships with one another it's it's really quite wonderful so uh, I'm delighted it, to be able to include this as a resource, an instructor's resource for my um, curriculum. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> We're really happy to hear that. Um, and at the same time, as you work through this, we know this is the work in progress and it's, it's open for improvement. So please kindly consider reaching out if there's anything that we could do to improve. We really appreciate it. Thank you. At first <laughs> blush, I, I'm blown away by how uh, thoughtful and thorough um, it is. And like I said, I've seen a few of these before more for coming from grassroots, grassroots NGO uh, spheres that are very basic for kind of in person workshops with multi stakeholders. Um, and this is the first one I've seen coming out of an academic environment with um, a, a very, like I said, thorough, thoughtful, the design is, is really um, it looks like it would curb chaos <laughs> in a real life scenario. <laughs> Believe me, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> so, this is great. Thank you. All right. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to uh, linger too far in, but uh, there's also the last slide and we'd just like to kind of share with you about what will be happening in 2023. Yeah, so um, as we continue to refine the curriculum, we are doing another pilot <clears throat> and we're looking for four UBC faculty members interested in working with us uh, now that we have the tools. In the first pilot, we were building them as we were working with the faculty. Now we have them. We wanna see how they actually get integrated and refined and what improvements are needed. So we are um, gonna be soliciting faculty who are interested in being in the pilot. They'll have access, as I said, to working very closely with one or two of our staff throughout the course. Um, they'll also have access to $5,000 to put toward course um, delivery, whether that be a TA, a researcher, however, partner um, stipends, whatever that looks like for their purposes. Um, and so uh, there is a call for that and Bruce is the lead on that process. So we will be looking for faculty to sign up now with the expectation that they start working with us over the summer, uh, either teaching in the summer or teaching in the first term or of, uh, of next year. So even though you're signing up now, you're not actually, we're not looking to make changes in January. It, you have some time to build with us um, toward that course. So that's where we're at now. And with the goal that after we've done the second pilot, we'll have eight kind of exemplars that we can start to build from and understand how to actually make this more effective and useful. And, and the evaluation, thank you, Susan. And the evaluation project that I already mentioned, again, it's a work in progress and it uh, stands uh, to be distributed to, uh, to the new four faculty that are joining us. And we have the survey design and the focus group questions that uh, we'll be happy to talk about those as needed with the faculty who are on board and, and talk about the significance of its distribution because we hope maybe next year this time we'll have better data about the post survey with the students to kind of share that with the faculty at UBC. Yeah, so we could uh, we could just stop recording if that's uh, that's okay, and then open the floor to a more uh, informal conversation if there's any questions that we could answer. <laughs> 